So there are going to be several options of how this can attack this. And just for ease of routing transitions to states, um, let's do this with the resonance structure of the phosphorus illid. Uh, of course, the resonance structure of the phosphorus illid I'm going to draw in orange. Are you guys okay with this being the resonance structure of this and really being uh, these two really explaining how it reacts? So this explains why this carbon is so nucleophilic. But this is a nice neutral uh, resonance structure. So this is probably more stable with a very uh, nucleophilic carbon here. So first off, when you're trying to decide on the attack of a nucleophile here on this, what you want to say is, what is the biggest group on here? What's bigger, phenyl or hydrogen? It's phenyl, right. My next question is, what's the biggest group here? A phosphorus with three phenyl groups or one phenyl? What's going to be bigger? A phosphorus with three phenyl groups. And so what that means right now is, this is going to want to attack with the phosphorus as far away from the big phenyl group as possible. So it's going to attack so that the phosphorus is pointing away from the stairs. So I guess you would call this a exo transition state because the phosphorus is pointing away from the stairs of the, uh, the aldehyde. I just made that exo term up, but I hope you guys see what I'm talking about. The big stairs or the steroids are pointing away from. And now, with this metal group, we have two choices, right? We have the phenyl group being here and the hydrogen being here, or the hydrogen being here and the phenyl group being here. Which one do you think would be more sterically favored? Hydrogen or phenyl here? Hydrogen, right? And so that would mean our phenyl group will be just like this. So this is how the illid will attack the carbonyl from this sort of transition state. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to magically turn this back into the resonance structure, the other resonance structure. OK. And so now what's going to happen, since this has a lot of minus charge, It's going to approach the carbonyl just like this. So this will be the lowest energy approach. Options in the back. And so is oxygen next to this phosphorus. And so I'm just going to draw up the line right now. All right. So this, by doing that analysis, we just formed our, in three dimensions, our puckered four-membered phosphorus oxypate. So this is, this is the intermediate of this. My question for you is, is this going to be the cis or trans uh, oxypate? Well, we know it's trans because they said this is lowest energy. So we know this has to correspond to the kinetic product. So, what do, so 
if you look at this, are, is anyone saying, oh yes, this is obviously the cis transition state? Is, do you guys, and I don't expect anyone to do this, I'm, I'm going to show you in a second when I fly it out, but does anyone just look at this and be like, oh yes, these phenyl groups are totally pointing in the same direction when you fly it out? Oh, awesome. To those who see it, good for you. Uh, but yes, no. So if you flatten this out, and this is, again, taking in some of these deals, alder brain cells we developed studying for the exam with exo and endo. If you take this and you flatten it out, what you will see is that this hydrogen is really pointing in the same direction about this bond as this is. And then this phenyl is pointing in the same direction. So if you take this little coupled thing, and so you have the phenyl group here, and a hydrogen group here, and this is the orange. I don't have enough hands for this, right? And then as we flatten it out, you will see, as we flatten this bond out in two dimensions, that so as this is drawn here this hydrogen's in the back and the phenyl groups in the front you will see that as this goes back here, this hydrogen will also be pointing towards the back. And the phenyl group will be pointing towards the front. I know that's a big leap. Uh, you know, best thing I should have done is brought in a molecular model and done it. But uh, I don't have a big enough molecular model kit, unfortunately. I have a tiny one that you guys wouldn't be able to see, unfortunately. Uh, but if you draw this, and you keep uh, going back and forth, you'll see that this indeed is actually the cis transition state. I'm not going to ask you to draw this in three dimensions. I just wanted to show you guys that the cis transition state is the kinetic. And so based on realizing that this will attack by the lowest energy confirmation, where standard interactions are minimized, and this attacks, it will give us the cis. So, do you get, will you guys at least take my word for it that the kinetic four member ring is the cis? Maybe. Meaning that the kinetic product is the cis. Just for fun, draw this out. I just wanted to preview guys. Because I was thinking of just saying, oh, just so you guys know, cis is kinetic and trans is thermodynamic and leaving it at that. But then I'm thinking, I'm like, that's not my style. My style is giving you guys all the information and letting you make up your own mind. So, in the end, the take home message is for the cis is kinetic and thermodynamic is trans. That's the take home message. But all this stuff, where we minimize the, we minimize the transition state of the carbon attack and the aldehyde for asterisks to get this three membered ring, which is really just the uh, cis four-membered ring with respect to these groups. That, that's just me showing you proof. But, so now what we know is the cis is the kinetic product and the trans is the ring. And here's the thing about the bidding. It's always going to give you kinetic. As long as you have an electron donating group or an electron neutral group, it's going to give you kinetic. So if you have an electron donating group or an electron neutral, a neutral group, I said neutral group, that sounds good. So if you have, a, if you have an electron donating or an electron neutral group, you will get the kinetic all the time. Just to give you another example. Really, 
fully electron rich, uh, spherically hindered uh, aldehyde. Here is a phosphorus illid. Cold. And the fragile get out will be the cis product. You know what? Let's go crazy. I have a method group here. I want to really prove a point. Let's go T deal as well. So even if you have two really, really big sterically hindered things, if they're electron withdrawn, you're going to get the sterically minimized uh, transition state, which will be. transition state for the nucleophile attacking the carbonyl, and it will give us this cis four member rings, this huge stereo interactions, it can't go back. And so this will just fall down, giving us our best TBL cis olefin. So this kinetic is really, really powerful. Right? There's no business making this because it's so hindered, but that's how it will go. So any electron donating or electron withdrawing, sorry, any electron donating or electron neutral group in the binning will give you the kinetic cis product. But, you know, so I, I, I haven't said electron withdrawing group. So what do you think electron withdrawing groups are going to give us? It's going to give us products. They're going to give us the thermodynamic product. Does anyone want to guess why we get the thermodynamic product before I draw it out? That's good. Let me draw the transition state and then we'll see if anyone guesses. So let's start off with the same aldehyde, but now for our uh, phosphorylic lactoplacent T beta group is something that's electron withdrawn. Let me do a different color too. <laughs> Somebody give me an electron withdrawal group. What? NO2, nitro group. NO2? Yeah. Sean, how am I doing? What do you say? Uh, my graduate students here, I was asking how I'm doing. So, we have a nitro group. So, my first question is this minus charge going to be more stabilized in this case than it is in this case? Is this minus charge more stable than this minus charge? Next to next to electron drop. <coughs> Absolutely, right? Uh, what happens is, I'll draw a quick resonance structure. We, this minus charge when it's next to an electron withdrawing group, any electron withdrawing group, can resonate into an electron withdrawing group or give its electrons into an electron withdrawing group because what do electron withdrawing groups like to do? Thank you. Jinx, I almost said exactly that thing. That wasn't embarrassing for me. So what that means is we have this nice resonance stabilization into the electron withdrawal group. So just to give you some PKAs, for instance. So this the conjugate acid of this probably has a PKA of about 20. 20-ish. Don't quote me, but it's going to be in that region. 
because obviously this phosphorus plus charge is going to stabilize this a fair bit. The pKa of this now adjacent to a nitro group is probably 8. So because of the electron withdrawn group, and this works with any electron withdrawn group, particularly carbonyls, uh, because of the electron withdrawn group, we now have a much more stabilized phosphorus ilent. That's a lot of the reasons why we get the kinetic. So now, this will attack two different ways. And I'll let you guys draw the transition state with this your way. But nonetheless, this will give us both the cis and the trans transition states. So here's the cis. Well, let me rephrase it. 